The South African leg of the BMW Golf Cup International saw 18 golf days take place around the country at various courses. Players in three different handicap groups took part, and the winners from those events then advanced to the finals in Neisner. We are here at the BMW Golf Cup International um, um, in South Africa at the national final. Um, we are determining for the next couple of days um, um, the finalists who will then eventually go to Mexico to the world final. The Golf Cup International is um, um, the world's largest amateur golf event um, um, which BMW um, on an annual basis um, um, holds up and holds. Well, it's over 100,000 amateurs who compete on a global level. Um, um, this year in South Africa we had about 1,400 um, amateur golfers competing uh, against each other. And now here we are at the uh, yeah, national final with 36 players um, um, competing and hoping that they will get, be sent to Mexico. The handicap divisions are the men's A scratch to 12 and B 13 to 28. The women's had one division, scratch handicap to 28. So just who makes up the entry list? on the South African leg of the BMW Golf Cup International. Most of our players um, um, are BMW customers. Um, um, it is a perfect um, um, yeah, customer loyalty program um, for our dealers. And for us as the brand, as BMW, there's no other or better opportunity to engage with our long-standing customers um, um, and to have a um, um, close relationship and, and, and build relationships. After 18 rounds at clubs all over the country, the final this year took place at Pazula Golf Club near Neisner, a stunning layout. Selecting a course to host the final must be a tough task as there are plenty of world-class courses all around the country. Well, there's lots of work which goes into that, obviously, um, um, from the team at BMW South Africa. Um, um, and it, it's quite hard, actually, because there's so many pretty and amazing golf courses in South Africa. So um, um, the year before we have been at Fancourts, um, 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 before we have been in, um, um, in KwaZulu-Natal, um, um, actually, it's, it, you can't go wrong. Um, uh, most of those golf courses in South Africa are just incredible. Um, um, but as you say, this year Pizula, um, and now in Simola, um, um, and um, I can't wait to play. The event is, of course, restricted to amateur golfers. They are the lifeblood of the sport across the world. South African golf icon Gary Player explains why events like the BMW Golf Cup International are so important to the game in South Africa. Well, first of all, we've got to understand one thing. It's through the amateur that the golf game is growing. Maybe not as fast as we'd like to see it grow, but young professionals starting to play golf for a living must be aware of the fact if it wasn't for the amateur, the businessman, they'd have no tournaments. And so forth, they have a debt incurred and they have to service these tournaments, they have to service these sponsors and remember how fortunate they are. We played golf for virtually no money. We traveled on airplanes with no TV, no beds and traveled 40 hours to America, 40 hours to Australia, stopping four times. So it's very, very important that people realize it's through the amateur. And these events, like BMW putting on this event, I've been to many of these. And I must just say, I've just got the new X5, which is the best car I think I've ever seen. It's absolutely magnificent. And uh, so BMW have done so much for golf around the world. We've had events where they go and they qualify. The whole world goes to qualify and then the winners go to Dubai, Mexico, South Africa. And uh, so they're forever not only sponsoring golf, but charitable events, things for young people, things for old people. They, they're a great sponsor. And uh, you know, they say everything in business is negotiable except quality and they exemplify this. The players who qualified for the finals at Pazula had the rare privilege of taking part in a clinic and walking the course with a man widely regarded as the best golfer this country has produced. With nine majors among his staggering 165 tournament wins around the world, he has plenty to offer. So what did Gary tell them? Well, the first thing is not to make it complicated. Uh, you cannot get the amateur golfer who only plays maybe once a week, some only once every two weeks. Now, we do see a lot of guys that play five times a week and they will, you know, you'll phone the office and they'll say, the secretary will say, he's on a course. And you think he's on a business course, but he's on a golf course. But the average guy only plays really uh, once a week, once every two weeks. So you've got to make it very, very simple for them 
and not complicated. So uh, I really enjoy going the two holes because it's something different than I did as a young man, standing there and doing a clinic and demonstrating all the different shots. But they walk with me on the golf course, as we see, and they see us playing all kinds of shots. And that's what they want, and that's what I enjoy doing. You know, I've traveled more miles now than any human being ever at 65 years of travel and I've seen how the game has grown and I know for example how many golf courses we've developed around the world and I see golf getting very very popular now because uh, I played the other day with a man who's a horse trader called Mike Bass in the Cape. He is crippled from his waist down and he's got a golf cart that the members very kindly gave him at Milnerton and he plays to a 16 handicap. I played, or he's one of my heroes. I played with a man called Douglas Bader in England, had no legs. He was a zero handicap. People that are blind have shot 80 and even broken 80 on occasion. Now, can you imagine that? So golf, you can play, it's the one sport you can play forever. And one thing our government haven't realized, I watched our Minister of Sport the other day talking about sports, she never even spoke about golf. She must realize, our government must realize that the most exposure that South Africa gets from any sport is golf because there's a tournament everywhere in the world being filmed where billions of people are watching this around the globe. And uh, we've always got wonderful young South Africans playing and great ambassadors for us. And uh, so golf is a very important for South Africa for tourism. Tourism, obviously, is one of the most important assets that we can have in this country. Your gold, your diamonds, your ore, everything else will go away one day. But tourism, and we've got a country that is so magnificent, so much to offer, such a great structure, but people are very scared to come here, unfortunately, at the moment. The BMW Golf Cup International in South Africa is played on an individual Stableford format. And Janine van der Merwe, a seven handicapper from St. Francis Bay Golf Club, was victorious in the women's section and will be heading off to Mexico to represent South Africa against the rest of the world. Janine scored 35 Stableford points, two more than Chalene Oosthuizen and five more than third place Lynette Smith. So how did Janine feel about the way she played? I started off very badly actually. I had a, a nought on the first hole, which I thought, oh, here we go. Another very difficult round ahead of me. The wind was pumping. So I was thinking, how am I gonna get out of this position? So then, at about the third hole, I settled down, um, made par there, and then further on, I only made 15 points on the first nine, and one of my playing partners had 20 points. So I had a lot of um, work to do on the back nine. So in the end, I made 20 points on the back nine, and ended up with 35 points, which I'm really happy about. In the men's B division for players with handicaps between 13 and 28, 18 handicapper Ravindra Surujbeli was in fantastic form all round. He scored a remarkable 46 points, nine more than second place Pat Nyati, with Ashraf Ishmael in third place. So what were Ravindra's thoughts after his superb performance? Grant started fairly poorly, uh, doubled on the first hole but then decided to put the driver away and uh, just played some steady golf. Uh, took a few lessons into account that Mr. Player gave to us yesterday. Kept my head down on those putts, sank quite a few on the front nine. Uh, decided on the back nine that I was just going to play percentage golf, making sure I hit fairways and greens. And that's what I did and turned those pars into uh, buddyable opportunities and made a few on the back nine and that's how I ended up with uh, such a big score. The men's A division for scratch to 12 handicappers was really tight. Rainer Kraus, a two handicapper, and 12 handicap Peter Nsoko both scored 34 points, with Peter edging ahead on a count out. But the man who beat them both was Londo Mgadi, a nine handicapper from KwaZulu Natal, who kept his nerve over the tense final couple of holes to score 35 points to take the win and book himself a ticket to Mexico. Going to Mexico, I'm very excited to represent South Africa. I am very excited to, to represent the brand of BMW and be their ambassador. I'm quite happy about that. Just talk me through the last two holes, 17 and 18 today. Hey, the last two holes, uh, number 17, I was able to hit the green in one using a three iron. It's a very short uh, par four. But uh, when I tried to convert my eagle 
short into four points, I, I failed. I ended up with a baby. And uh, I accepted that, going to number 18, uh, it's a stroking hole where I thought I was going to make uh, a baby, which was going to give me four points. The T box was uh, allocated to me, and uh, I started uh, uh, arranging myself to get the driver going on. I addressed my shot. Unfortunately, the shot went to the left, and on the left there is a big bush, whereby uh, when the shot went uh, into the bush, it uh, hit a branch of a tree or whatever it did, and it fell onto the short rough. And uh, when I was standing on the tee box, waiting for my peers uh, to drive their shots, I could see and understand that this is all about me winning this BMW. And then I said to myself, going to that second shot, I'm not going to approach the green. I played my, my, my second shot, short of the green, next to the bunker on the right, and then I uh, played the uh, eight iron, uh, which I played very well onto the green as my third shot, which was the green in regulation. And uh, I studied the part. There was a guy uh, taking photos and the video uh, for that shot, and I prepared myself for that because I knew that time I needed the four shots, even if the VAR uh, machine was not uh, updating the scores. So when I made the part, I threw my head off. And I said to myself, this one is for you. I'm truly excited to go to Mexico and to represent South Africa and BMW. I've never been to Mexico, obviously. <laughs> so hopefully it will be a great experience. Yeah, super excited, especially my wife, because it's the second time that we'll be going. We honeymooned in Cancun, so we're going to be across on the other side at Cabo San Lucas, so we're really looking forward to it. And we wish Janine, Ravindra and Londa all the very best of luck as they take on the world in the BMW Golf Cup International Finals in Mexico.